Hi everyone, uh, in one of my last videos I said I will do another video to show how the dsdplus.radios file can be used. Um, essentially it's a database of, of uh, received um, source IDs um, on, D on the DMR network. Every user has, a, has an ID number which they're issued with, uh, which is then programmed into their radio. Uh, when they talk um, through a repeater, that ID number is picked up and um, stored on, on a central or database or in, in many locations, actually. Um, but that, that also comes through DSD Plus and is shown here. Um, while that person's actually talking. So what I'm looking at here is just a recording that I'd done the other day um, after I'd populated the the file, the DSD plus radios file with all the data that I needed and I'll, I'll show you where I got that from as well. Um, so in the top left hand corner of this screen here um, just over the um, kind of DOS window we've got DSD plus DMR channel activity I'm not going to explain everything, what it does or what's there, but what we're looking at here is the last two fields. We've got source and source alias. Now, what I've done here is I've populated the file um, with a source alias description um, using their call sign. So here we have the source ID. Now, normally what would happen is if you'd install DSD Plus, you'd just see the source number. You wouldn't see a source alias because DSD Plus doesn't actually ship with with a populated um, .radios file. Okay, so but what will happen is um, is as you use DSD Plus uh, on DMR, um, that radios file will become populated and it will store the source ID number um, but no alias. Now that particular file itself um, contains uh, a few different bits of information but all I'm going to talk about today is the source alias. Just so that it's... The, the reason for this is, is so that when I'm, I'm listening to DMR via, via DSD Plus I can easily see who the person is who's talking. So, for example, this particular uh, person was M6SXP. Now, if I just click play on this video, there's no audio with this, so don't worry. There's nothing wrong with your speakers, but you'll see in a second this will change. It will change to a different call sign because this person would have stopped talking. There you go, and now it's changed to somebody else. Um, that's because the source ID has changed. So what essentially this application does, it, it takes the source ID, looks up that record in the database, and then populates the source alias. Now this is quite useful because, for example, if I didn't know that person, which obviously I probably don't, um, there's various websites you can go to like qrz.com. You can type in their call sign and you can find out more information about them if they've if they've actually created a page. Now this particular example here, let me just uh, Oh, let me just go back on that actually. There you go. So at the moment here it's showing two call signs. This is because obviously with DMR you have two slots. So we have slot one and slot two. So this is actually showing there's two people talking at the same time. Um, different targets which is different talk groups. So one's worldwide and one's local. Now, uh, over here on the right hand side on the event log, if you just have a look down here in the blue writing down the bottom, you can see here it says 29,225 radio records saved, to, uh, 29,224 aliases. What's happened here is I populated the database with 29,000 records. Um, and the reason why there's one different is because somebody has talked uh, through th through DMR while I've been using DSD Plus and their ID was not 
in the database file so it automatically creates it but it doesn't populate the alias now to explain a bit more about how that file's made up let's just uh, close this down because we don't need to look at this anymore now I've just downloaded a fresh install of DSD plus just so I can show you what the file looks like this is it here DSD plus dot radios now if I just open up that with a normal text editor first of all this is how it ships so you're going to get a file that looks like this now as you start using the application you're going to start getting records populate down here um, each field is going to become separated this here what well, says line format this is like the header so this is showing you what each of the records each of the columns uh, data so this is what it should be now let's have a look at the file that I populated so I'm just going to go into here okay so it's quite a large file it's 2.6 meg and here we go I won't scroll through all of them there's 29,000 odd 29,224 to be precise okay now you may be wondering where I got this information from this information came from a website called DMR mark go to database advanced data dump I think I just click this one here actually there's a few different options you can do now this here this is actually a data dump of every single person that has registered on the DMR network for amateur radio it includes different types of information such as their ID number their call sign their name and then the last three or four fields will be their location and country so if you wanted to in that source alias area which I showed you earlier in the file you could actually put any information so you could actually probably put their call sign and name I'm not entirely sure how many field, how many uh, characters you can fit in there but um, the space on the on the window didn't actually look that much so if you look here one two three four five six maybe seven characters I, I'm, I haven't actually tried it I, I'm only interested in the call sign but you can put whatever information you want in there so this is where I got um, the data from and then simply using Excel so let me just, just so I don't mess up this file uh, just want to copy that Um, okay, so what I what I need to do is just quickly change the extension to CSV, and then um, I want to open this with. Well, I'm going to use numbers. Numbers is like a, a Mac equivalent of uh, Excel, so it allows you to easily edit CSV files. It's quite a large file for what it is. I mean, it's only two point, but just under three meg. But it's right. Okay, so this might look familiar. This top part here. So we've got the information about what the file is, and also the the header information. And so I'm not going to explain what everything is here. Uh, only only thing I will point out is every single field needs to be filled out so you do need to have some data here what I simply done was I, I, I left one one record I let the software record a few call signs I left say one in here I then copied and pasted the, the, the ID numbers here and then copy and paste the radio alias or the call signs here and then for the rest of the fields or uh, columns which were empty I just literally copied the first line 
into the rest of them. They will change on their own because one of the great things is is that this particular file, the DSD plus dot radios file, you can edit it live while using while using the software, um, which is quite good. So just to go back to here. This gives you a bit more of a, a visual so when you're listening you can quickly glance at the screen and you can see who it is who's talking. Now remember this is, uh, I know DSD Plus works for different types of digital modes, this is really for DMR. Um, I've only really tested this software with DMR and DSTAR, DSTAR you don't need to worry about because on the, on the DOS window it shows you the call information anyway. But with DMR, um, all of the encoded data is shown here and not in the console window. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. I hope it's explained what, what can be done with this. Um, if you've got any questions, pop a uh, question in the comments area of the video. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, I use that as a feedback of how useful these videos are. So if, you, uh, if you've got any other ideas for videos or you've got any questions, just uh, drop me a message or uh, leave a comment and question and uh, I'll try and uh, answer your question for you. Thanks for watching.